lecture will be on stochastic partial differential equations. And uh, well, I will call that um, most of the time SPDEs. So I will divide the talk into three parts. So in the first, the first one will be uh, an introduction, a quite long introduction to the subject. Then uh, in the second part, uh, I will give uh, some theory of uh, underlying uh, stochastic partial differential equations. And in the third part, I will talk about uh, possible interesting problems in the stochastic partial differential equations, and in particular on some questions that have motivated my research in the, in the recent years. I start with the introduction. So in that introduction, I will define what the SPD is. So then I will talk a little bit on the origins also why SPDs, so that means the rationale behind SPDs, and also see the role of uh, these uh, SPDs in, in modeling by the hand of some examples. So let me start by defining or by recalling what a partial differential equation is. So a partial differential equation is uh, some equation involving some unknown function, which is called U, of two or more variables, and also sum of the partial derivative. So for order one, say to order k, okay? And together with that, we give the initial condition, which is the value of this function at a given initial point, y zero, and boundary conditions in the case where the domain A is bounded. So this is general setting for a PD. And uh, an important example and very popular one is the heat equation. The heat equation goes back to Fourier in the 19th century, and this equation that describes the temperatures, the evolution of the temperature of heat on a given uh, bar, say a limited bar, that we identify with the interval 0L. So uh, the heat uh, evolves following this rule, that means partial derivative with respect to t of u must be equal to the second derivative with respect to x twice, okay? And we give uh, the, the, the temperature at initial time t, which is, uh, um, so to say, um, spread out uh, uh, along uh, the interval 0L by means of this function u0, and then we put uh, some boundary conditions, for example, a Dirichlet boundary conditions means the same condition at the two points of the, in the, on the border of the interval. And so then, uh, as we see from this equation, uh, the, uh, in this setting, this is the classical setting for PDEs, so the solution is a smooth function. And uh, an evidence of that is uh, this simulation. So here mm, the, in this simulation, this is the time axis and this is the x axis, okay? So we start at time zero with uh, a smooth function, sort of a parabola, and we see that when times go past, uh, there is a, a diffusion of this initial condition so that uh, the curve becomes flatter and flatter. So this is typical uh, of the diffusive behavior of uh, heat. Okay, so now uh, what is a stochastic partial differential equation? So uh, um, looking at the pattern for PDEs, so I, I define a stochastic partial differential equation as an expression of this form. So if you remember for PDEs, so we had only this F, so the part which is in black, okay? So here I add two things. So the first one is this parameter omega, and the second one is this term here, okay? So what is omega? So omega stands for randomness. So omega is a parameter which belongs to a probability space, capital omega, and in statistical terms, omega means an observation. So omega is the random parameter in the system. So what means this uh, extra term here? So this term consists of, uh, of uh, two factors. So the first factor mimics f, is uh, quite the same. So f could be equal to g or different. The number of derivatives that are involved can be the same or different. And this term is special, so it only depends on omega, that means on randomness, and on the variable y. 
And this is what is called the noise. So what does it mean? So that means that we have for this, we have for equation, and then we have add to this equation an external random forcing. So in the case where G is a constant, assume that this is a constant, so this external forcing is only the noise. But it may happen that this external forcing, the noise, depend on the state of the system at a given point Y, or at every point Y, and this uh, is uh, why we put here this non-linearity, okay? So this is the general, the, the general form of SPD. And we put as uh, for PDEs an initial and boundary conditions, if necessary, that may also depend on omega. So they may also be random. So this is um, uh, the general form of a stochastic partial differential equations. When it comes to examples, we can, we may, we can simplify enormously this uh, setting and think, for example, uh, 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 on the stochastic heat equation. Uh, so in the stochastic heat equation, in this example that I, I, I wrote here, so we keep the F and G as they were in the uh, deterministic case, uh, uh, sorry, F as it was in the deterministic case, but here for G, so I don't put randomness. So I just put sigma of u t x is like g of u. Now y is time and space. So this is uh, the, the, the variable time and space. And I put this uh, external random forcing f. So by doing so, this is, a, as you see, a simple example. But by doing so, things change substantially. Uh, for example, if you make, as before, uh, a simulation of the, of the, uh, for this equation, uh, here, as before, we, uh, this is the time axis, this is the x axis, you start with an initial condition, which is a uh, uh, wavy, and you see that uh, uh, with time, this progress in a quite involved way. So it's much more interesting object than just the tunnel that uh, we have seen uh, before. So now you, you may wonder why I have chosen to write a stochastic partial differential e equation in that way. Okay, so it could be several ways. So the, the reason uh, comes from the finite dimensional analog and more precisely from uh, Ito calculus that was developed by Ito. Actually, Ito was the founder of a stochastic calculus in the 40s. So according to Ito, a stochastic differential equation. So now I move to the finite dimensional analog. So stochastic differential equation is an object like that. So if you look at the black part of, uh, of the equation, you see an ordinary differential equation. But uh, Ito add this extra term, which has exactly the same, uh, the same form as the, the extra term I add for stochastic partial differential equations. So this is a forcing noise, and this, no this forcing noise is nonlinear in the sense that it depends on the evolution of the equation at any given time t. Okay, so f and g may be random, but uh, we probabilist normally we don't put the omega. So the omega could be here and could be here, or, or maybe not, and could be here or maybe not, okay? So everything could be random or not, but uh, the important thing is that uh, the extra term, the, the, the external forcing is given by, by, by this uh, uh, product. So uh, it all considered as noise, what is called the Brownian motion. So here, the dot means the derivative of the Brownian motion. So Brownian motion comes from also 19th century uh, as observations, very erratic uh, uh, trajectories of uh, particles of some, uh, for example, pollen particles in that case, in suspension in a liquid. So um, people, scientists became very interested in Brownian motion because of uh, this uh, very strange behavior. And it was Einstein simultaneously with uh, Smoluchowski, a physicist, that they gave a physical description of Brownian motion. But this physical description was not about the trajectories of the Brownian motion, but rather on the density of particles 
that one can find in a given volume. Only what Einstein, what Einstein discovered is that the equation for this density is the heat equation, okay? But let's forget about Einstein and Brown for the moment, and let's go back to the stochastic differential equation, not SPD, but the stochastic differential equation that already before Ito, for example, in, in, in 1900 for Bachelier or Langevin in 98, uh, was used as models for something. For example, Bachelier used that as a financial model, so the model for the evolution of the price of the risky asset in the uh, Paris uh, uh, stock exchange. So this is uh, an Ito equation, but a very, very simple one. Or Langevin also uses uh, the same kind of equations uh, to describe the velocity of a Brownian uh, particle. So the idea of Ito, when uh, uh, he discovered the more general kind of a stochastic partial differential of a stochastic differential equations driven by Brownian motion was not that of modeling, but uh, um, much more, so to say, pure mathematical or, or, or oriented uh, aim. And this was the realization uh, of a diffusion process as the solution to some equation. So in some sense, uh, uh, the aim of Ito was to, to, to bridge Einstein description with uh, uh, Robert Brown observations of uh, uh, Brownian motion. So uh, this is, uh, so to say, the historical background for uh, the, 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 the initial uh, work on uh, stochastic differential equations and therefore also underlying the stochastic partial differential equations. So um, you may think, okay, so um, I mean, she's doing, uh, she's presenting us some models, but are they realistic or not? Uh, there are more, um, so to say, deep uh, ideas uh, behind uh, these proposals. And you may, you may find an answer in this, uh, in this uh, picture, uh, which I will try to explain to you in a very naive way. I might say, uh, I will not be very rigorous, but I think that this helps to understand the situation. So now uh, we, we put ourselves on a, on a uh, physics environment. And um, if you look at, uh, at, um, at the particles, uh, at atoms, for example, so that means if you really go to the microscopic level when you are studying some uh, phenomena, physical, biological, or, or whatever, at the microscopic level, uh, there is a lot of chaos and there is a, a, a lot of randomness. Okay, uh, there is so much uh, randomness and chaos that it's very difficult to, to, to build, sorry. So to build uh, um, uh, models uh, from, to, to explain this behavior. So normally what scientists do uh, is a, a sort of a simplification of these observations. And this can be done uh, in the following way. So uh, a classical way is, okay, I will not take into account the observation, but the mean of the observations, okay? So this is a sort of normalization. So you take, you take uh, uh, for example, the arithmetic mean, uh, so that is chaotic. So is, uh, this is uh, so, um, the, 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 the arithmetic mean of uh, random variables. And because of a statistical regularity, because of the law of large numbers, this is law of large numbers, we know that this converges, this approaches the mean. So with this normalization, we kill randomness. randomness. And what we see is a, 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 a world um, with uh, glasses uh, of a microscopic type. So we forget what happens, uh, uh, observation by observation, and we uh, just um, look at the average, okay? So then the evolution of these averages are described, are, are described by deterministic equations. They, they can be differential or ordinary differential equations or PDEs, uh, basically, okay? But of course, we can think of other type of normalizations. For example, one knows in probability theory that if instead of normalizing but one over n, we normalize by one over square root of n, then we are in the realm of central limit theorem. And then the sum normalized by one over uh, square root of n 
uh, the, uh, don't have a constant limit, but rather a random limit. So the limit is a Gaussian. Okay, so that means that with other normalizations, we don't kill uh, randomness. So if we do that, so uh, in, somehow we are uh, describing the reality between the atomic, uh, between the microscopic level and the macroscopic level. And this is what physicists uh, call the mesoscopic level, so something in between. And then the evolution of these observations at the mesoscopic level uh, is done by stochastic equations. So uh, this is, um, this is um, an explanation that you, you can find in the introduction of this book that, uh, at least for me, is uh, quite uh, enlightening. Okay, so uh, let's uh, give some, some examples of SPDs. Um, and I will, I will start with a sort of a ludic example given by Walsh, which is one of the founders of the theory of stochastic partial differential equations. So imagine that you have a guitar left outdoors in a sandstorm, okay? And uh, so uh, the question is, uh, what tune will the guitar uh, play? Okay, so what happens is that uh, is the following. So uh, if you consider the displacement of the string from equilibrium, and you call it U, this is governed by the wave equation. The wave equation is the equation that you have here, but forget on the red term. So only the, the black term, okay? But uh, what happens in this situation, this can be, for example, cables also uh, that, are, that are carrying some signals or whatever, okay? But, um, so these strings, uh, if they are in a sandstorm, are bombarded by sun grains, okay? So that means that these strings are receiving many, many impacts in an independent way at different times, at different places. So how to model that? How to model the effect of this distortion of the displacement? So this can be done with a noise. And uh, then this leads to a modification of the initial deterministic wave equation to a stochastic uh, wave equation. So this is one example. The second example uh, is, uh, concerns the evolution of uh, electrical uh, potential in neurons. So um, there are uh, classical uh, equations that were um, proposed by Hodgkin and Hatchley in 1952 uh, on the propagation of action potentials in axons. So uh, these equations are very complicated and uh, okay, what they try to do is the following. So here you have a neuron, okay? So the impulses, uh, 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 the many, many impulses, uh, that means information arrives to, uh, at the dendrites of the, of the neuron. And then this creates a, a potential, which is the action, uh, the action potential, which uh, uh, goes uh, through the axon to the next neuron, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So a, a simplified model for the propagation on the axon of action potentials uh, is given by the cable equation. So many people use the cable e equation uh, instead of the original equations of Hodgkin and Hadley because they are more, more easy to handle. So what is the cable equation? So the cable equation is this equation here without the uh, red part. Okay, but uh, it makes a lot of sense and actually uh, it, uh, it uh, fits better with the reality to add also uh, some external forcing, uh, which is random. So why? Because the impulses that arrive at the dendrites through the uh, synapses, which are uh, some several places here, arrive in a, in a very disordered way. So we cannot uh, know exactly how many, at what time, et cetera, et cetera. So it's much better to uh, add uh, something random, uh, random noise, and instead of considering just the cable equation, a sort of a stochastic cable equation, which is uh, similar to uh, a non-homogeneous uh, heat equation. So this is a second example. So there are other examples that came uh, from physics. Uh, 
uh, one of it is the parabolic Anderson model. So uh, this, this uh, the Anderson, the parabolic Anderson model is a model for the diffusion of particles in random environment. So now the randomness is in the environment. Okay. And uh, so by physical uh, arguments, uh, so physicists describes this phenomena, the diffusion in random environment, as an initial value problem, a Cauchy problem, for the heat equation with random potential. So here uh, we don't have a random forcing, but rather in the description of the system, uh, the, the potential is random. Okay. So this is the parabolic Anderson model. So I didn't put initial condition just to, to, to make uh, the story shorter. Okay. And then there is, uh, so the last example I would like to present is uh, that one. So this is the KPZ equation, which became very famous because of uh, the impressive work of uh, Martin Heiger and co-others. So the Carter parigi uh, Ch chunk equation uh, describes the evolution of interfaces between two regimes. For example, I don't know if you have a surface, uh, 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 there could be some part which uh, is burning, uh, and then so that there is, uh, so the, the burn part uh, is interacting with the not yet burn part, okay? So there are an interface between this, in these two regimes, and the evolution of this interface is given by this equation, okay? This is a uh, space-time white noise, I will talk later about that. So uh, this equation is different from the preceding ones in the sense that there is a nonlinearity in the derivative, so this should be more complicated. Uh, it is related with the parabolic Anderson model because uh, if, uh, well, this is a formal thing, but uh, helps to understand also uh, the subject. So if you take uh, the solution, I mean, whatever it is, of this equation and take the exponential. So then the U satisfies the parabolic Anderson model. So this is the connection between the two uh, examples. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the end of uh, this uh, uh, introductory part. So and now I will move to the, to the second part of the, of the talk uh, on some theory uh, for uh, SPVs. So I will introduce uh, the notion of closed form expression of uh, the SPV. I will also talk a little bit on the stochastic integrals, which is the, I would say, the, the basic part of the theory for the subject, and also define uh, what, is, uh, what are the random field solutions to SPVs. Okay, so for this, I will move from the abstract formulation I started with, so this was the abstract formulation of a SPD, to a more concrete one. And uh, this more concrete one is described in that way. So L is a partial differential operator. So that means that F here, so the term with F now is of this uh, kind, okay? And then, uh, so the, the stochastic part or the stochastic uh, external forcing is given in this way. So that means that, well, there's a drastic simplification because now I am not assuming that G depends on the derivatives, okay, but only on U, okay? And uh, I, I will not take a generic uh, Y variable, deterministic variable, but instead I will take time and space, okay? So Y is now time Tx, so time and space. Okay, so, uh, and I will here consider as a noise, uh, a Gaussian noise. So I will later on introduce uh, this uh, more precisely, but the idea to take a Gaussian is because uh, we are um, using, uh, thinking of modeling the uh, central limit theorem to approximate many independent uh, inputs into a Gaussian process, okay? So uh, this is a very popular noise in stochastic analysis. The, the, of course, is not the only possibility, okay? And all the examples that we have seen so far, that means the heat equation, the wave equation, the KPZ equation, et cetera, all the equations we have seen uh, before uh, can be described uh, with uh, this uh, uh, framework, okay? So this is what uh, we are now going to consider. So what is a closed form expression for the SPV? 
So it's a formula uh, that express U in terms of the input data. So what are the data? So the data are the coefficients V, sigma, the noise, the initial and the boundary conditions. These are the data, okay? So uh, formally, what we can do here, if we would like to have the expression of U, is just to invert L. But of course, this is very naive because L is an operator, is a differential operator, so maybe we are asking too much, but at least formally, uh, this, is, uh, this would give us the, the expression of U. So now uh, it happens, and for this, uh, I will rely on the theory of PDEs, that of uh, deterministic partial differential equations, that in some cases there exists uh, an object called the ring function if uh, the domain is bounded or the fundamental solution if it is not bounded, such that this operator has an integral representation, okay? And uh, then we can write U in terms of integrals of some kernel, and the kernel is either the green function or the fundamental solution, okay? So this, this is the case in, in many examples, and the term here, y0, is the contribution of the initial and boundary conditions. However, uh, to simplify my, my talk, I will assume that the initial and boundary conditions are zero, so that I will, uh, I, I, I will go read uh, um, of uh, this uh, term, okay? So, uh, this is the, the closed form expression if it exists. Okay, it does exist, for example, in the cases we have seen for the stochastic heat equation. So this would be the closed form expression, assuming that uh, the initial condition is zero. So here I, I can see in, in comparison with the, with the case before, I am considering the stochastic heat equation on the whole line. So then this fundamental solution is well known and is the density of a Gaussian random variable with variance to R, where R is a time here, okay? So it's nice to, to, to see that, in fact, this term is a convolution in, in analysis, so it's a convolution in, in time and in space, okay? And this, okay, I will talk later about that. It looks like a convolution, but the trouble here is that instead of uh, having an integral with respect to Lebesgue measure, I have an integral with respect to the noise. So uh, for the wave equation, again, uh, well, I take uh, dimension three uh, just for pleasure, and uh, there is also a closed form expression, but uh, things become more involved with the wave equation, because for example, in dimension three, this fundamental solution is given by a measure. So this is the uniform measure on the sphere centered at zero and re with radius r and is normalized by a constant time one over r. So this is, uh, I mean, much, uh, so much more complicated than in the case of the heat equation where we had this nice function. So here we have, we have a, a measure and in higher dimensions we have a distribution. Well, in both cases, in both examples, uh, we have seen this kind of integrals appear, okay? In one case, it was the integral of this uh, fundamental solution. There is the nonlinear term sigma with respect to the noise. In the case of the, of the wave equation, similar expression with a much more complicated uh, fundamental solution. This is the translation of the um, uniform measure. But if you look uh, closely to these two integrals, uh, you, you see two things. So the first one is that the integrator is very irregular. So uh, uh, in principle here in the infinite dimensional case in SPVs, we will take noises which are more complex than Brownian motion. Uh, and even with Brownian motion, we will be in trouble here, okay? And uh, moreover, the integrands may also be non-smooth. For example, in this case, we have a measure. So what is the meaning of this? Okay, so there, uh, you see that uh, there is a need for a theory of a stochastic uh, integration. And uh, of course, uh, this will depend very much on the type of noise uh, we are uh, considering. So um, I will talk a little bit on that. And for this, 
I will also go back to uh, Brownian motion and uh, what happens in the case of a stochastic integral with respect to Brownian motion, which is, of course, more elementary. So uh, Brownian motion is a Gaussian process, meaning that all the random variables are Gaussian, but uh, it is well known that the trajectories, I mean the, the paths of this uh, random process, are functions that are nowhere differentiable. Therefore, integrating in the classical sense has no meaning, okay? However, uh, there is a, la a law of large numbers for Brownian motion, which says that the limit when t tends to infinity of the quotient of vt over t is zero. That means the trajectories of v are of rapid decrease. So in the language of distributions, this is a Schwarz distribution. Therefore, we can consider the derivative or the, the, in the sense of distributions. And this is what is called the white noise, okay? So um, because this is a Schwarz distribution, we can make, so by definition, the action of this distribution on a, on a test function is given by this formula, which by integration by parts turns out to be that. Okay, so this give, give, may give us an idea of how to define the stochastic integral of phi with respect to the derivative of Brownian motion, okay, through this formula, okay. So one may think that, okay, we have solved the problem. However, uh, it is far from being so because uh, what happens is that we are not happy with, uh, uh, you know, knowing how to integrate uh, test functions. We would like to extend this definition to a much larger class of stochastic processes. So this will never cover uh, stochastic integrals like that. So this, that's uh, definitely uh, too simple. Okay. So is this extension possible following the ideas of uh, distributional calculus? And the, the, the answer is not, no, that's, uh, well, that, that's not uh, enough. And the reason for that is uh, that, as, as I have explained in, in the slide before, so this proposal uh, is based or uh, relies on uh, this law of large numbers uh, for Ronian motion, but forgets about other, or many other uh, important properties of Ronian motion. Okay? So the stochastic integral with respect to Ronian motion was developed by Ito, and uh, the idea of Ito. Uh, is uh, very elementary, but the implementation is not elementary at all, was not elementary at all. So the basic idea is, okay, so I have to define the stochastic integral of uh, some process, which uh, could be, I don't know what for the moment, with respect to Brownian motion. So I will start uh, as I do with the Lebesgue measure, for example. So I consider first step processes. So that means uh, stochastic processes that are constant on some interval. So you consider a partition and uh, you define a, a step process uh, associated to this partition and the integral as a Riemann sum. Okay, so you take the value of the process at the, the interval tj, tj plus one, and you multiply by the increment of Brownian motion. Okay, so but then you have to extend by a density argument uh, the, this definition to much more complicated stochastic processes X. And uh, the point is here in the extension. Okay, so this uh, is possible, this is the Ito theorem, this is possible because of uh, several facts. So one fact is that uh, the process B owns what is called the Martingale property. So this is very, very important uh, property of Brownian motion. And the other thing is that we need X to have some randomness which does not anticipate the randomness of Brownian motion. So there is a measurability, so uh, you know, fine measurability conditions that uh, link the stochastic process with the Brownian motion that does the job. So this is, I mean, very roughly the, the, the main ideas of a stochastic integration with respect to Brownian motion. But here we don't need something else because Ornois 
must be not only a noise in time, as Brownian motion is, but also in a space, as we have seen, motivated by the examples, for example, the, the, the guitar left outdoors, etc., etc. So instead of Brownian motion, here uh, we are interested in uh, multidimensional noises, and um, this uh, brings me to the definition of a space-time wide noise. So what is a space-time wide noise? It is a Gaussian process indexed by sets, and the sets are uh, subsets of R plus and Rd. This is for time and this is for space. A Gaussian process means that, means more than that, but means that in particular each random variable is Gaussian, is normal, okay? And the mean of this uh, space-time wide noise is zero, so it's centered, and the covariance is given by this formula. This is the Lebesgue measure. So the covariance between uh, W on the set A, W on the set B, is just the Lebesgue measure of the intersection. So for Gaussian, uh, Gaussian processes, the, the structure of the co uh, covariance carries all the information about the process. And this information can be encapsulated, I will not enter into details of that, or, uh, in a Hilbert space. That in this particular case, for uh, space time wide noise, this Hilbert space is L2 of Rd. So then, using some technical arguments based on projection on this Hilbert space, which is very closely related to the covariance of the noise, it turns out that this space-time wide noise can be represented, so mathematically represented, as a sequence, a sequence of independent Brownian motions. So this, uh, um, this um, transfer to infinite dimensions is uh, uh, still Brownian motion plays a fundamental role, is the fundamental brick, but it can be done in terms of projection. Okay, so now uh, how to define the stochastic integral with respect to space-time wide noise by projection. So what we can do is we project the integrand on a, on a orthonormal basis of the underlying Hilbert space. So now this is a stochastic process depending on T. We integrate in the Ito sense with respect to the Brownian motion and we take a series. And of course, I have to make precise what is the meaning of the convergence of this series, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that, well, this goes beyond the, the scope of this uh, lecture. So uh, this kind of ideas uh, can also be applied uh, to uh, noises that um, more general than a space-time wide noise. So uh, for other kind of noises that are Gaussian, uh, we'll have the corresponding Hilbert space that will be just H, and then the process of integrating with respect to a more general noise can be carried out in the same way. So this uh, theory of a stochastic integration with respect to uh, space-time wide noise and more general noises have been developed since the 90s by many people, and here I just uh, mentioned uh, very few. So, okay, so uh, now we are in business. Uh, so uh, remember the, the, the closed form expression uh, for the SPD, okay? So remember that the, the existence of a fundamental solution or, or green function, and uh, now you, uh, so now the SPD becomes an, an integral equation, okay? And uh, with, uh, with the, the, well, the few uh, ideas that I gave you before, we see that these um, have a meaning, and these also have a meaning, omega by omega, because it's just the convolution, uh, the usual convolution in analysis, okay? So now the problem is, uh, okay, and what is a solution? What means a solution to the SPD? So there are many, not, not many, but several, maybe three, three or four, um, type of uh, uh, no notions of solutions to uh, stochastic partial differential equations, but um, the one that uh, is uh, more useful uh, for uh, in terms of uh, modeling uh, is the, the notion of random field solution, which is a very natural one. So 
uh, we say that a stochastic process indexed by time and space is a random field solution to this equation if there is an equality almost surely almost surely means except of a set of trajectories of probability zero for every t and x fixed okay so the solution of this spv is not some uh, functional valued uh, uh, function of t but a function of t and x okay and uh, when we fix omega uh, what we observe are the trajectories and the trajectories are very very irregular in general so this is i think the simulation of a stochastic wave equation so uh, you see that you have a fractal behavior uh, and so on so uh, that's the definition okay so uh, now that uh, we have a sound definition of the spb and what uh, what the solution means there are uh, classical problems and not so classical ones that can be addressed for example a well posedness so does a solution exist uh, it is unique uh, what is the dependence uh, with respect to the initial data or with respect to the boundary conditions or what the, uh, the noise etc etc also properties of the solution so uh, analytical uh, geometric we have seen the fractal um, picture uh, probabilistic for example existence of densities of the solution uh, can we do uh, numerical approximations and what are the rates of convergences uh, how they behave uh, when time goes uh, to infinity etc etc so many many problems so just uh, to to focus uh, uh, on some of them um, for example, I, well, I, I wrote here two. Um, for example, how much regular are the trajectories of U? For example, you can think, okay, uh, they belong to a fractional Sobolev space or maybe to a Hilder uh, uh, space of continuous functions. I don't know, things like that. Um, so this is a, an analytical properties of the solutions. Or for example, you are interested in uh, so do the trajectories hit points visit some part of of a, of a space so this is important for example in physics so when you know, molecules of a gas uh, visit some some place in the world okay and um, so th these questions can be answered uh, and just uh, here very simple an in, uh, answers in a very simple examples for example, consider the heat equation that we have seen before uh, a couple of times. So uh, we, one can prove by probabilistic methods that uh, uh, almost all the trajectories are jointly continuous. And moreover, there are Hilder continuous in time with exponent less than one four and in space uh, with exponent less than one two. So this is well known. Uh, we have also results of this type for the wave equation and much more complicated stochastic equations uh, concerning uh, whether the trajectory is hit points or not um, so for for we know that for a d-dimensional system of a stochastic heat equations points are, are rich so are hit with positive probability if and only if d is less than six so that means if the dimension of the system is small so points are hit if um, if uh, the dimension is is big uh, they are not hit this is because we have more degree of freedom and uh, so the critical the critical um, parameter is uh, six and uh, you see that six uh, well is many things but in particular is four plus two okay so uh, that means that uh, the study of this uh, heating uh, problem may be related to the regularity of the sample paths okay and um, so uh, this brings me to the last part of the lecture uh, which will be uh, five minutes on heating probabilities and uh, it's uh, it's related to this question here do the trajectories of u hit points or sets with positive probability so I reformulate uh, it, so it's almost the same. Do the trajectories of solution to systems of SPVs hit deterministic sets uh, with, pro with positive probability, in particular, of course, points. 
so let me describe more uh, extensive, more, more uh, precisely the problem. Uh, also, um, remind you uh, the historical results uh, on heating probabilities for Brownian motion, and then uh, give uh, just uh, some ideas on what is going on uh, for SPDs. Okay, so um, I will formulate heating probabilities. What, what means a heating probability, the study of heating probabilities? So we are considering a random field, so that means a stochastic process, which is indexed by a parameter in Rm. We have seen examples, time and space, for example, the solution to the, to the stochastic wave equation or the heat equation, and it takes values on Rd, okay? So imagine that we have a system of equations, okay? So uh, V depends on omega, of course, because it's stochastic, okay? On X, Rm takes values on Rd. And the question is, uh, uh, naively said, how many sample paths, so we fix omega, we have a trajectory, okay? So how many of these sample paths visit the set A? For example, this A could be a level set, okay? So uh, how many uh, we are in, you know, in probability, in a probability lecture, so how many means uh, we have to measure that and we'll measure that uh, with a probability. So what is the probability of the samples such that when we restrict these samples to some set Q of indices, we hit, we visit the intersection with a deterministic set A is non-empty, okay? So uh, if we would like to have an idea of uh, this is big, this is small, what happens? One idea is, uh, uh, as always in mathematics, is to prove upper and lower bounds, okay? Like an estimate. And uh, we will do that, so th these are called the heating probabilities, okay? So we will do that, but uh, uh, first we have to, to decide in terms of what? So uh, upper and lower bounds in terms of what? And uh, we see that there may be uh, three ingredients that here play a very important role. So one is the regularity or the roughness of the sample paths. Because typically, for example, this is the a simulation of, uh, of the sample paths of the, uh, the two-dimensional Brownian motion. So typically, these sample paths are very irregular. Moreover, the set A that, uh, in principle, we would like to see if uh, is heated by this process or not. So this, this uh, set A may be, uh, you know, a very, very regular set, but maybe like a Cantor set or something like that, okay? And of course, the dimensions also play a role because the dimensions, uh, you know, that in physics means more or less degrees of freedom. So this is why we, uh, in what, uh, well, what, the, what is done in the theory is uh, the, these upper and lower bounds are described in terms of the, uh, 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 in um, notions of um, geometric measure theory, like the Hausdorff measure or the capacity, okay? Um, so these are much more precise uh, measures than the Lebesgue measure, okay? But you, of course, many of you, uh, are familiar with this, uh, these objects. So um, can we do that? So the first result, uh, I think, in this direction is a, a result by Kakutani, who um, studied what happens with a Brownian motion. So for a d-dimensional uh, Brownian motion, Kakutani proved that uh, up to multiplicative constants, this probability is of the same order than the D minus two uh, Bessel risk capacity of the set A. So if you don't know what is the capacity, um, so I mean, it's fine to understand what is, what is going on. So this is a way to measure the set A, okay? And uh, this measure uh, has, to, has to, to do with two things, the dimension of the Brownian motion and two. And two is the inverse and one over two. And one over two, is the threshold of Hilderianity of the sample pass of Brownian motion, okay? So this is the result by Kakutani. So uh, after Kakutani, there, there, there were many, many uh, further developments uh, for more general processes than Brownian motion, but almost all rely very much on the Markov property of Brownian motion. 
So uh, Rodian motion has two fundamental properties. One is the Martingale property, another one is the Markov property. So here is the Markov property which plays a, a role. And uh, these developments um, so actually came um, uh, to the probabilistic potential theory uh, from which uh, Doop and many others uh, were the, so Doop maybe is the founder and many others have uh, developed this uh, subject. So what happens is that um, a Markov property is not a property shared by the solutions to uh, most of the stochastic partial differential equations. So now the question is, okay, uh, can we develop this uh, uh, probabilistic potential, sorry, so can we develop a probabilistic potential theory for stochastic partial differential equations? That, that's to say initially, so the very basic, basic problem is, uh, so can we uh, prove a sort of Kakutani result for the solutions to stochastic partial differential equations? Okay, and the, the answer is yes. Um, so um, one, can, one can give a general criteria so that they have been in the last year, so here you have uh, um, some people that have contributed to that. So there have been um, a lot of work on trying to understand what is essential uh, in order to get uh, upper and lower bounds for heating probabilities uh, for, um, in general, random fields that could be applicable to stochastic partial differential equations. And it turns out, not surprisingly, that uh, uh, the analysis of the trajectories of the sample part of the, the trajectories of the of the SPVs and also the existence and properties of densities of the solution play a fundamental role in this criteria. Okay, and then once we have this criteria, they can be applied with uh, uh, more or 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 less effort uh, to uh, obtain results on the solutions to SPVs. So let me say by passing that uh, here, in order to study the densities of uh, solutions to SPVs, a very important um, to toolbox is, uh, so a very important theory is the theory of Malleable calculus. So, I mean, with the help of Malian calculus and the help of a stochastic analysis, so with a mix together in a, in, a, in a clever way, we can get the criteria and this criteria applies to SPVs. And uh, as, a, as a sample of possible results, I just um, state here um, a sort of uh, extension of Kakutani's uh, result so this concerns the stochastic heat equation. So this is the heating probability. So quite recently, Dalang and Feipu proved that uh, this uh, heating probability is upper bounded by the Hausdorff measure of Fe and lower bounded by the capacity of Fe. And these parameters give a, a very good explanation of, uh, on, of the role of the dimensions and the regularity of the sample paths. Um, there is a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of, but many results on the stochastic heat wave, Poisson equations, equations with fractional noise, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and many work is uh, uh, already going on. And so uh, let me just finish by saying that the study of these heating probabilities uh, is important uh, in order to deduce uh, geometric uh, properties of the solutions to the SPVs. Okay, so for example, I don't know what is the Hausdorff measure of the range, uh, what is the Hausdorff measure of the level sets, so things like that. So heating probabilities is just a, a, basic, a basic tool to uh, analyze uh, with much, uh, to get more insight into the geometric uh, properties uh, of uh, the, the solutions. And uh, that's all from my side. So thank you very much and uh, stay safe.